Now you'll notice that there's um, a stereo audio track attached to this particular clip. Um, I don't want this audio um, in my recut trailer, so to remove it, I can hold down Command L to unlink that clip. And when I do that, you'll notice that I can select the video and the audio independently of each other. And when I click on the audio, I can simply press delete on my keyboard, just like that to remove it. And now the clip plays without any sound. There is another way, because we're probably not going to use a lot of the audio that's coming from this movie. There is another way to um, avoid that. Before I drag the clip into my timeline, I'm going to unlink the audio like this. And you'll notice that when I drag the clip down and I drop it into the timeline, the audio doesn't come with it. I'm going to press undo and I'm going to show you that again. If I drag it down and I move my um, cursor beneath the line into the audio region, it'll actually bring that, bring that audio with it. So if the audio is unlinked, you can still bring it into the timeline. Um, it just depends on where you move your cursor to when you're dropping it in. Okay, I'm going to drop this clip into my timeline, like that. And I'm going to find another um, clip. From this particular sequence. I might start here, I'm going to mark in. We're killing and eating their victims, prompted authorities to examine the bodies of some of the victims. Medical authorities in Cumberland. Press the space bar to pause. Use the left arrow key to take it back a few frames and press O to mark out. Now I'm going to drop this into my timeline. You'll notice that when my cursor is above this thin grey line, uh, the arrow is pointing to the right. When it's below this thin grey line, it's pointing down. Now the difference uh, there is if it's pushing forward, it will put it'll push any clips. Um, that you put it on top of forward. I'm going to press Command Z to undo. If, however, you drag it in and the arrow is pointing down, it will um, write over any clips. It'll overwrite any clips that are in the timeline. So I'm just going to drag this and drop it in next to that. Now, in my sequence, you'll notice that when I move clips around, uh, when they get close to each other, they'll snap. Uh, this option's called snapping, and you can toggle it by clicking on this button here. And when you turn it off, you can move the, move the clips without them um, snapping to either the playhead or other clips. Now this is, can sometimes be a handy thing to have on, it can sometimes be a little bit annoying. To turn it on and off, the shortcut is pressing N on your keyboard. So I've just hit N and you'll notice that snapping is back on. Um, remember that shortcut because it's something you'll be using fairly frequently. Now when you're creating your recut trailer, another tool that you're going to find very useful is the zoom tool. It's over here in the toolbox, but the shortcut on your keyboard is Z. So if you press that, it'll pick up the zoom tool. Now this allows you to either zoom in like this, or if you're holding down the option key, zoom out. So you can very quickly go from um, looking at your entire recut trailer to examining a few frames very close up. Remember, holding down the Option key allows you to zoom out. You can also zoom in and out uh, by adjusting the bar at the bottom of the screen. And if you drag it, then you can zoom in and zoom out. And I find that's a really quick and handy way to do this. Now, to fade a clip in and out, um, what you need to do is press the toggle clip overlay button that lives in the bottom of the timeline. And what you'll notice ha has happened now is that there is a thin black line at the top of these clips. Now, to fade this in and out, we're going to create a couple of keyframes here. And to do that, we're going to select the pen tool. The pen tool lives over here in the um, toolbox but its shortcut on the keyboard is P. So when you want the pen tool, hit P. The way you create fade-ins and fade-outs very basically uh, is just by keyframing like this. And this is a really basic um, opacity keyframing here. 
So if I go back and play this clip now, you'll notice that in the canvas, the clip fades in and fades out. Now I'm going to do exactly the same thing to uh, the next clip, and then I'll show you what it looks like by playing them in sequence. Now one of the things you might notice is that this clip is a little bit on the long side. Now when you've dropped a clip into uh, the sequence like this, uh, by selecting the move tool, um, clicking on the arrow in the toolbox or pressing A on your keyboard, uh, you can adjust the in and out points of clips just by dragging them like this. So let's say we want to make this a little bit shorter. I can make it a little bit shorter like that. Or if I wanted to bring it in a little bit here, I could do that. I'm going to hit undo because I um, don't want to do that. And I'm going to fade this clip out once again by pressing P to grab my pen tool and making a couple of keyframes, opacity keyframes there. Alrighty, I'm going to play these in sequence and see how it looks. Okay, this is looking reasonably good. Another very useful tool in Final Cut is the Blade tool. Let's just say you wanted to cut a clip in half um, for some reason. Pressing B on your keyboard or clicking on the razor blade in the toolbox uh, allows you to pick up the Blade tool. Now when you move the Blade tool over a clip and you click once, it'll create a division um, in that clip. I'm going to press A on my keyboard to grab the Select tool and move those two clips apart. You'll now notice that it's been split down the middle and you can move it around independently and even delete it.